Hey, welcome to the Brand Manual. Uh, I'm Tim Douglas. This is Mark Douglas. Uh, today we are like we're like pumped. We're like really freaking excited because we have uh, somebody who is is like minded. They're in the industry with us, and they are convicts out of New York City. Pete Maiden, Allison Cornford, and uh, who I'm hoping I can call Allie. Absolutely. Ah, nice. All right, right on. Uh, first off, just you know, take it from the top. Who are you guys? I, uh, so I'm Pete, as you said, I'm actually in Byron Bay, Australia at the moment. Um, so I was in New York for 15 years, have kind of, uh, escaped with my family down here for a little while where I grew up. Um, but spent 18 years in America. Um, we founded convicts seven years ago now. Um, and, my background was in content production, started my career at Rolling Stone magazine in New York as a writer and then into the into the web production, um, content production, and then in agency world for a while. But uh, I really missed having a direct relationship with audiences. So mm-hmm. Convicts was founded, you know, actually more as a publisher than as an agency. And we really wanted to be a voice in culture. Um, with this troublemaking spirit. Um, I should probably contextualize the name convicts. Um, Please do. That was going to be my next uh, question. <laughs> it's why um, it's the Aussie nature to it. So my um, my lineage in Australia is half convict, actually. <laughs> my ancestors are, were on the ships. Dad likes to say they sailed on the ships, but they were below deck. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, but we, we, yeah, so there's this kind of rebellious nature to convicts. Um, our purpose is troublemakers for a better world. So there's really has to be substance to what we do. Um, it's our absolute North Star. Um, and we have two sides of the business. We have our agency side of the business and then our voice and culture, our, our originals division, we call it. Um, and both are really important. We'll talk about it more on the friction, but, you know, to, to kind of intro and, and let Ali have a, a second to introduce herself the uh the agency side is really important to our business and something that we've really focused on for the last few years um so we're really excited to to have brought Ali in that has awesome experience from the advertising world as well um and I'll let you jump in Ali and then I can maybe give some more background to the business and what we're up to yeah awesome yeah do. So I'm Ali. I've been a convict. I still have to get used to calling myself that uh, for for three months. Um, I'm Canadian, moved down to to New York about four and a half years ago now and has spent my entire career at various different ad agencies, kind of grew up at Anomaly, was at Droga 5 and BBH before this, and then got connected with Pete and the team and was really intrigued, I think, by not only the small, nimble nature of going back to an independent agency, but definitely the spirit that Pete was talking about, about really making work with conviction, partnering with clients who are like-minded and you know, not chasing revenue, but really just chasing great opportunities and great content. So um, it's been an amazing, amazing ride so far these past three months. Man, I love that. So can you tell me a little bit about like what sold you on Convicts? Yeah, I honestly think it was Pete, my first conversation, I think like 20 minutes in, we were like, we got to do this. This is amazing. And I think it's very rare in this industry to find a group of people you connect with as people. So not just an agency and what they stand for a client real, but people who have very similar values at their core. Um, And I think Convicts is a really special agency where we'll talk about with our originals business, like we are a brand. In, am- in amongst ourselves, which is very rare, I think, in our industry. I think a lot of brands almost point to their clients' work in their reel to say, this is who we stand for. Yeah. And we're really proud to be able to point to a lot of our own originals' work. And that, for me, was a really cool um, and almost niche proposition within the industry that we're out there making incredible work and partnering with great companies, but we're also making work for ourselves, which is always you know, the, the one thing at agencies that gets pushed aside due to deadlines and budgets and what have right. you. Um, so at this point in my career, just getting back to amazing creative with a really tight group of awesome individuals. I mean, I think, yeah, my first conversation with Pete, I was hooked. I was like, all right, let's do this. Yeah. So there's some specific phrasing that I would love for you guys to unpack a little bit. So um, the there's some edgy disruption component to what you guys do. There's social and cultural movement, mischief to make 
to make good, the good kind of trouble. These are phrases that um, are associated with convicts. So um, I, this is the most probing question I could come up with, which is what is the biggest trouble you've ever made? You got to take that one, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, I think like, you know, as my job, it's this is probably a step back, but my job as CEO at this point is to create value and create the vision for the company. Mm -hmm. And the vision for the company, which is troublemakers for a better world, like I'll start by unpacking that a little bit and maybe yeah. then the articulation of it, but it's, you've got to, you've got to throw some stones and we've got to have substance. And we kind of, you know, when we came out of the block seven years ago, we, we kind of, we got some funding um, between each other really to, to make some films and some content that we thought lived up to this idea of troublemakers for a better world. And we probably shot about a hundred short films with people in culture we thought were stirring it up for the right reason. Um, I would say in that first year, we almost did no brand work, no advertising work. We maybe took on a couple of little projects. We just put our heads down and said like, we're gonna build a brand. And as Ali said, building that convicts voice was step one. And it's been the foundation for us. And maybe the most troublemaking thing is, is to be honest, is not just being an agency. Like there's a lot of opportunity for us to turn off so much of our time and energy on troublemakers for a better world and just say yes to briefs and work for clients and make money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we don't do that. And, you know, there's, there's been people that have looked at our business and the investors we've talked to and, and different things are like, well, hold on, if we turn off this brand, the margins are there. Like, this is a really profitable business. This is, and it's like, no, sorry, that's not us. Mm -hmm. um, this is the most important thing. It's the heartbeat of the company. We have a pitch meeting every week, the whole team joins. And we've, we've maybe missed three or four in the last six years. Um, and everyone can pitch stories for things they believe in. And outside of any client work, and we fund those stories. And, and to this point, we've done thousands of them. You know, there's probably 250 short films that we've shot at this point that we've paid for. Um, and that, that alone it is a ton of risk <laughs> in like really pursuing the brand and, and pursuing this idea of troublemakers for a better world. We did a series earlier this year um, with a friend of ours, Mike Kim, around the racism in the Asian American community. And we got to the end of it, we shot, I think it was six short films with um, friends of the community that had dealt with some really awful racism in their lives. They told their stories beautifully. Um, and I was talking to Mike afterwards and he was in conversations with investors and stuff too. And they were like, well, what's the value of this? And we were like, what's the value of ending racism? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but like, right like that's like that's it's the most important thing we can do you know so mm -hmm. whether it is racism or the environment or different things that we lean into and and i don't think it's uh it's certainly not at this point my vision that's the thing that comes to life every time what's awesome about having a team of people like ali they're like i want to work there is troublemakers for a better world that better world part is like that's up to us as a group is like, what is a better world for us? Because you've got to be passionate about it on an individual level of what is your thing that you feel like we can move the needle on in culture. Um, and then we'll support it. If, you know, if the conviction's there um, in the team to, to, to tell a story, you know, the suicide um, awareness film, the, the mental health awareness film we just put out around suicide prevention, it's just that came from someone on the team saying, hey, I've had, I've lost people recently to the point where I'm compelled. We've got to do something about this. We've got to put our energy and resources into it. Um, it's not marketing. <laughs> it's, it's real content. It's, we want to make a difference. So I think hopefully that spirit is the most troublemaking thing. Um, yeah, we've, um, can I, yeah, can we I continue interrupt to, for a second and yeah, of ask course. a question? So with that many different voices in a room, you're going to have differences of opinion where somebody's going to say, no, no, this is a really pressing issue. And specifically, my perspective on it is I want to take that angle and somebody else on the other side of the table may say, I don't see it that way. Or I'm, 
have there been those kinds of friction moments uh, over the last few years? Um, yeah, there has, and and it's 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 certainly I like I kind of like to be honest. I look forward to those like when there's friction, you know that something is serious and real. And um, an example might be I know when we were you know when the pandemic was kind of really hitting and we were talking about issues that were coming up and things that we could lean into. Um, and I know abuse in the home was skyrocketing and child abuse was, and we were like, we need to jump into this straight away. Let's tell a story, let's figure it out. And um, we, we talked to some friends of the brand. We talked to some social workers about how to do it. We ended up um, not withdrawing from the topic, but the way we were gonna tell the story of talking to humans, the advice was no. Is like, let's think about characters or animation or use animals or do it in a way because by talking to kids or even having kids kids on camera in this particular film, right. it's not right. And yeah. so I think that the answer to the question is to listen <laughs> and to get the right people in the room to make sure that we're not like, hey, this is right. <laughs> And this is what we're doing and we've got better at that for sure. And, and I think that's why it's nice having a diverse team um, of people with different backgrounds and from different places um, to help us try and get that right. Because when you do, when you, when you throw stones, you're not always going to get it right. But, you know, the intention is to, to do better and make the world a better place. So I think it's Pete. also... Oh, I was just going to add, I think it's also the benefit of having a small group of like-minded people. I know a lot a place to say we're flat everyone has a seat at the table and, and a chance to input like we we truly are and in pitch meetings I think that's what's been really fun for me as Pete said like not only can everybody bring an idea but it's a really safe space to talk about if an idea is right or if an idea isn't and there's no ego we are all out there wanting to do the right thing and the best thing not only for convicts for what we believe in but making the best work and I think just the types of conversations we have are, are really real and that I think is also very unique to this industry that we're all you know ready to challenge each other in a really healthy way there's no hey pete's got the i mean pete you always will have the final say as ceo but there is there's no one really you know cashing in those cards it's a democracy of what do we want to do on behalf of convicts mm -hmm. which is all of us not as on behalf of an individual on, on the client side do you um you know obviously you guys have worked with prestigious brands and big clients but um, what would be an example of a really bad fit, right? Where somebody approaches you, they've seen your amazing stuff, they hear about your reputation, but you can tell quickly, this is this is not the kind of thing we want to do. Trump offered me ten million to do his uh, campaign <laughs> video for the next. <laughs> okay. no. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it's it's a really interesting question. Um, uh, to your credit, I really believed you right there. I, I saw your face. I was like, wow. I was like, okay. I'm glad we've got this on camera. It's a little um, low for Trump, but yeah, okay. It was a little, uh, that, was, that was just for the, to take the brief. Um, we'll no, use that we, clip as our intro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do it. That's the headline, headline of this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Convict, uh, convicts turn down Trump. That's the name of the episode right there. Love it. Uh, you know, look, to be honest, politics is one that we were talking about this morning. We have yep. this... Um, some politicians that have approached us and we're trying to figure out the right way of understanding like do the politics fit the team and is that um, a reason to go like we haven't really done much any political work to be actually to be honest um, on the brand side which is a little maybe a little less devices than the politics um, I think for us it we'd have to take a pretty serious look at um, that better world initiative and there's certainly have been moments when there's brands that have, or we've had conversations with even agencies, like we have a partnership with IPG around like, hey, will you talk to some of these big, massive corporations that sell sugar water? <laughs> and the idea is like, yeah, I'll talk to them, but don't expect our ideas to sell more sugar water to kids. Like, we're going to come to the table and there's other agencies that might be able to deliver on just selling more volume to a certain age group of a core product. We're probably going to push you on like, well, hold on a second. Like is the aluminum you're using in that can green? Cause you know, if you use hydro to produce aluminum, it's a hell of a lot better than using coal powered. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's there's ways of us or hey have we thought about what's next in the the development of a product that can be smarter or hey how can we put the money back into a social campaign that makes sense i just think you're not going to get just like an answer of like yeah we're just going to sell more for you um but i don't think it's right for us to just withdraw from um from a lot of conversations because of who the brand is or i don't think we've got a seat at the table then um you know, I think there'd be some obvious ones, like the environment's very important to us. Um, I think it'd be tough sell to take a tobacco client to the team right. and say, hey, let's do this. Um, yeah. So I think there are some there are some lines there that, that those agencies probably aren't knocking on our door, though, to be honest. They look at our website and say, hey, uh, these this right. probably aren't the right fit for us. Yeah. Yeah. They're self-selecting out. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And over time, I mean, eventually you'll... Uh, and not even eventually, probably immediately, you're you're already speaking to your tribe. You're speaking to clients that would love to work with you because they'll they'll ping, they'll hit something inside. Um, can I ask a question about uh, you you your transition, your own personal development into CEO role? You you started as a as a content creator and beautiful content, and and your and your agency even really went the way of content first, just tell good stories, keep telling beautiful, good media, beautiful, good stories. Um, how has the transition been to like team leader and visionary and having to care about the budgets? And I knew you were going to ask that question because you found yourself. Yeah. In that it's, yeah. it's been a journey, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's still a journey, to be honest. Um, there was a pretty critical point, probably uh, three, maybe three years ago, when I realized that that was what the business needed was was this role, this leadership role, and um, and it was probably at the time I had a I fought it a little bit. Like I was still directing films even last year, the year before I was still on the road, probably a hundred days of the year shooting. Um, certainly finding people that can that can pick up a camera better than me that the directing and the producing I just loved it so much that I found it really hard to let go of not being there and um to be honest I was a bit sad about it at first because I was just like hey this is like this is why I got into this is to tell stories and now I'm just the guy that has to be in the office to let everyone else do it but then I can't I don't know what what shifted I real I like really got into it the CEO role and I think it was like I brought it up before and um, I realized my job was to create value (laughs) and once I kind of really became clear on that I was like okay value can come in a couple of ways it's revenue with margin and profitability and that's really like our agency focuses on that model still it's like how can we make sure we grow revenue but we put all of the margin at the moment back into the brand to grow the brand and there are two sides to the valuation to me there's the, there's the revenue model and then there's the how do we grow brand how do we have a voice in culture and it's pretty intangible that value mm-hmm. and what someone's maybe willing to pay for it is is um very subjective but I've loved now knowing that like when we commit resources to making films and content, it's not just for no reason. There is actually a value that we're growing there. So once I kind of got my head around like, no, my new role is grow value, lean into it. So I kind of like all the stuff that used to be frustrating, like the legal conversations, the accounts, like if I look at my calendar, I would say more than 50% of my time now is admin and dealing with, CFOs and all that sort of stuff. Um, I kind of love it because I just come back to like, well, I'm growing value. I'm do- if I get this right, and also I'm creating more time for myself to focus on the brand by finding the right people to do these roles. So I've kind of, I kind of love it now. <laughs> but it t- probably, probably took me three years mm. of that transition um, to get there, and and really realizing the things that I don't know. I just hire really great people now. We spend more probably more money than we'd like to on on the accounting and finance legals we've got lawyers we love now it's like it seems strange to say that but i like i've had to really trust bringing right. in these people to help us yeah. how does how does the managing director kind of engage in a, in that equation 
Am, am I answering that That's one? That's you, Alex. On my behalf. <laughs> oh, I was about to talk about the, the, oh, no, you go. Yeah, yeah. Now, I was curious to know, how do you, as managing director, uh, working, you know, as an international agency, coordinating, scheduling, managing talent, uh, you know, that you don't even see, you know, how, how is that? Yeah. I know it's legit. That's a, that seems like a, that seems like a whole clockwork of who's on first. Yeah. It, it's time. funny. It's funny you say that because I, I actually haven't found that since joining Convex. Like we nice. are incredibly connected down to our lovely Slack channel. We start the day with that's what are you doing today? And everyone logs on in their time zone in the morning and says like, here's what I'm prioritizing today. Could love some help on this or so-and-so can you jam with me on that? Um, such a simple thing that I know the team started in COVID that we've kept up because it is a great way without micromanaging anyone just to have a sense of what everyone is working on, whether they're in New York with us in the office, we've got the team out on the West Coast now, and then obviously, um, Pete, we've got Baron back in Australia. So I think that's a really helpful sense when I wake up on the East Coast to go, okay, here's what everyone's working on. Um, but yeah, I think it is the luxury of having a smaller team where we're really focused. We've got our Monday team meetings to set the week ahead. And we are small enough that you've got a bit of a pulse of what's going on with everybody. And I think everyone is humble enough to also raise their hands when they do need help. So yeah. it's, I think my job is a lot less of putting out massive fires, which has been the bulk of my career, especially in the past five years. Um, and as Pete said, it's more having fun on like, how can we grow this and how can we talk to, you know, the, the movements and people and brands that have maybe been in our ethos and starting to knock on the door, but we haven't had time to in the last 18 months mm -hmm. and also get more upstream with brand purpose and brand strategy, which has been mm -hmm. amazing. And I think a huge focus um, of our work and what we're hearing from clients and what they're wanting, all emulating from the brand of convicts and them coming to us saying, hey, we want to emulate what you guys have done with your brand and your audience and your purpose. Can you help us do that? Um, so yeah, my, I feel like my time is a lot less about resourcing and management, which Cindy, our COO, does an amazing job at. And it, it's more just how do we how do we upstream looking at growth? And as Pete said, also just getting an amazing team of freelancers or new hires next on top as we as we look to grow pretty quickly. Speaking and just growth, to build, yeah. no, I think just build on what Ali said there, because it's been an interesting category for us, this idea of purpose agency of record, which we kind of, we're still really getting to the bottom of it, but it was by us working on our purpose and brand and putting the, the time and effort into it over the last seven years and, and really trying to be a voice in culture, it has caught the attention of brands to come to us and say, hey, can you help us with ours? Like whether it's a rebrand or, or a launch, it's like, and we've, that process is, is amazing. Like to be on that level with a, some companies which are massive and talk to them about, well, what is your brand purpose and why do you exist? Um, and then how do we articulate that into a strategy content internal and potentially then, you know, obviously external advertising is massive. It's, it's certainly got its friction points too, because it's not just a campaign that lives for three months. You know, hopefully these purposes we're working on are five to 10 year commitments from a brand. Um, so there's a lot of passion <laughs> in the work and a lot and it's not pain but like there's you know it, it's it's not um people don't kind of look at an edit lightly you know they'll really pull it apart and there are people in the room so it's um it's an awesome piece of work that ali has really kind of dove into and we've got some really cool projects actually we're working on at the moment in that category um and then also to have ali's experience with how to really professionally work with a client and meet expectations <laughs> that we probably didn't really have <laughs> for the first few years it's just content makers you know there's an expectation there oh, of how yeah. to really Pete, manage an account Pete, but, <laughs> Pete and I were joking yesterday I was like oh so I, I'm bad cop you're a good cop why did I think this wall was the opposite <laughs> <laughs> like amazing yeah we're a good balance yeah really really uh, fantastically talented uh, photographers don't necessarily aren't necessarily the best at the client interaction and making sure that the scope of work and all those sorts of things. So, so um, how do you guys, and maybe Ali, I'm not sure that you've been there long enough to know specifically, but how do you guys grow and develop talent within? So somebody who comes in, maybe they come in as a freelancer, but you realize, hey, there's a lot of potential here and we'd like to see you take the next steps. Um, do you guys have a system or a process that you guys use? 
Do you want to talk to that one, Pete? Um, you know, it's funny. I was just thinking we we've actually ended up hiring a few of our interns into full time positions over the years. And the one that comes to mind is our writer, Cam, who's our copywriter that Ali's probably his like favorite employee of the month, three months running now. He's, he's, he's kind of awesome. I love Cam. And he came in as a as This a is recorded student. for the rest of your staff. I just want to know. <laughs> well, that he's only- run through them, Sharky times, Dad. No, I'm kidding. So it's okay. It's, uh, but he, you know, he came in as a, he was a grad student doing his master's at, at, um, at, uh, Columbia and kind of walked in with his skateboard in his hand, midsummer New York, sweating, like, oh, I'm never going to get this internship. Mm-hmm. And we were like, you're hired. <laughs> um, and he's been with us and grown with us. And I think, you know, it comes back to just like why Ali maybe joined is, is really making sure that we're working on satisfying stuff. And obviously there wants this compensation growth that's important and a role and expansion of role, but I don't think that's what's kept our team with us for, and, and most of our team has been with us for five to seven years is it's like, we keep pushing ourselves to find stuff that gets us up in the morning. Mm-hmm. And if that was just like revenue, um, I don't think it would work. Yeah. You know, it's just, I think- uh, so I think, yeah. Even talking to Tom, who's our ECD and one of the founding partners with Pete recently, we were chatting about for him how, you know, the last kind of six months year with a lot of the new team joining, including myself, he, he was saying, he's like, it's almost like a, a phase two of Convex and us really mm-hmm. starting to bridge out more into this agency world as we still balance that with originals. And I think for, for people like Tom and Sharky and Cam that have been here from the very beginning, their growth is almost as the agency grows and changes. And, you know, especially with some more of the agency experience that when we were so deep in content, I think some of the guys didn't have. So I think that's part of the fun for them of like, they don't have to leave to go to traditional agency, but are now getting exposed to different brands Mm -hmm. and projects. And, you know, Cam's writing a brand new purpose um, for a company that's launching. He's like, this is so fucking cool that I get to work on this and then switch gears and go write the cure for our weekly newsletter and talk about UFOs. Like where else would you get to do that as a copywriter? Um, yeah. And I you think, know what I he got to, part of it. yeah, yeah, he got to like his, he's like a massive deadhead and okay. we made a film for Macintosh labs this year, the audio company. Um, and we were like, well, what if like Bob Weir voiced it's the, the idea was like the voice of God, Macintosh is the voice of God. And like, they've been here since the dawn of time. And then like, I don't know, a month later, we're writing a script and Bob Weir is reading it as the voice of God for the new Macintosh spot, the 75th anniversary film. And Cam's like, I don't know if I could tell you a, a greater moment in my life as a writer than hearing my words read by Bob Weir. Yeah. Like that's the sort of thing that keeps people, just like it gets people excited about their all job. All the planets aligned right there in that moment for this guy. Yeah, yeah totally. Just yeah. everything, <laughs> shining light from heaven. So Pete, what, what is one of the highest moments that you can remember as you reflect back on the seven years or so that you go, this, this felt like that to me? Um, Great question. Yeah, it's a good question. I think it's uh, it, it, two sides of the first few years. And this was one of the things I was thinking about, like when you work on those, when we, we shot those first hundred films before launch when you finally put up the website and the Instagram you know and like put it out you kind of like take that breath of like are people going to get it (laughs) and there's a hell of a lot of people like what is this we didn't even have credits on the website it was there wasn't even an about us section There, there was nothing to find out who we were or what we were doing it was just like brand and the feedback was like was just so awesome and and look the the production at that level we were shooting stuff on on fumes you know but we're just out there's like maybe six of us in the room just like constantly making 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 and that feeling of like of kind of putting something out in the world and realizing that it's clicking was amazing and then fast forward to like a couple of the shoots like we had a we had a shoot in italy we did on the future of denim and the sustainability of denim um and having i kind of that was one of the last things i directed and was like six days traveling across italy 
eating yes. and drinking and with the, uh, the diesel founder, right? With the diesel yeah. founders with Renzo Rosso. Yes, yeah, so we had two days with him. Like that was kind of like the aha moment of like, oh, how good is a job when you when you can eat and drink this well? Uh, and again, the team was, it was like really fun. The the talent Scott top said to me, he was like, this is way more fun than traveling with friends. <laughs> Like he was like, this is like a trip I would want to go on as a holiday, as a vacay, because it was just like, it was, it was, it was really fun. So I think a couple of those shoots, there's one in Haiti we shot called Score that was with Michael Bruin. That was like another one that I just loved. And then I guess more recently this, we raised some money in March um, to support the growth of the agency really. And, and to be able to, to, um, to talk to people like Ali and Dylan, who, who's Ali's first hire and, I think knowing that we got this nod from a couple of investors and in particular IPG that we, we would never would have expected. Mm. And when we had the conversation right towards the end of it and they said like, does anything make you cringe about this potential investment? Like what, what would make you go? And I was like, if I'd have heard once that you wanted us to turn down or tone down our brand and not be ourselves, I would have walked, you know, but the idea that like we can remain completely independent, you know, and just do our thing mm -hmm. and you guys see the support and value in that. And then saying to the team, Hey guys, we've raised some money. We've got more opportunity. We can bring really cool people in to help fill gaps. That we don't have everyone's getting a pay rise. <laughs> um, that's probably like a, as, as you, to your question before too, about like, the, the CEO role, I realized like that's where I get to really support now. Um, and I'm excited about that. Like we're talking about it, maybe a series A next year and really taking the business seriously and growing it. Um, that's to me, is kind of fun now and, and pretty exciting. Hmm. Fantastic. Last parting question, free plug. What are you guys excited about next? Blatant airtime. Just go. go for it. <laughs> oh man. What am I excited about next? I think for us, it really is partnering with more brands on their purpose. Yeah. I think we, we know from consumers, you know, they, they are voting with their wallets in terms of how they want to support brands that they believe right, in and right. have shared values with. I think, you know, in the last year, if that's taught us anything, it's like, fuck life is short. Like you want to be wearing and supporting and working with brands and companies that you believe in. So I think for us, having brands reach out and again, reaching out to us because they look at our brand. So they're not reaching out to say, Hey, you've got amazing strategy credentials. It's no, I'm really impressed with the brand you've built at Convex. Can you help me do that with my own? Um, and I think some of the conversations we're having, I'm just excited for them to land and then for us to be able to, to actually talk to, to you guys about who we're working with more fully. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think brand to, purpose for me is a big one. Yeah. And to build on that, I feel like it's brand purpose. If I'd have thought about that a few years ago, I'd have been like, oh, that sounds super boring. <laughs> like, can't we make something cool and like travel? I'm, I, and what I think I've realized is like, that's the space that's exciting is like mm. troublemakers for a better world. Like, how do we cause trouble as a brand? How do we be bold? And this is talking to our clients. Like, let's, let's not make this feel like it's this like super, you know, kind of dull corporate responsibility video like this should be the thing that is the the funnest and coolest piece of content we can make with you or the best writing um obviously we need to encourage them like you've got to invest in this like like you do your external campaigns this can't just be like a small chunk of hr money that's like thought of as like a, oh we need to need a brand purpose because it's helpful right. it's like no 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 like and then i think what's really this is the ceo talking now is like it has to be linked to performance like I want to be able to say we took this company from four billion to eight billion, and purpose was one of the things that really united that company. Yeah, and that to me is also you know uh, I think a, a massive challenge for us is to link purpose to performance in a way that's really tangible, um, quantitative, and at the same time that the work is like culturally stands out and isn't just like the what you'd expect an internal brand purpose film to be. Mm. Wow. I think Pete was saying this before too, like when we work with clients on purpose, it is 
their North Star, right? It is the one thing everything should fall down and emulate from. And those conversations we have with them are very candid and very transparent. We're not just writing marketing jargon for you. We are writing something that you need to be able to stand behind, believe in, to have every product innovation fall out of. And I think those are really rich conversations to be having with clients. Then we get the fun of making content that speaks to that. But I think those types of conversations really excite us that we're also pushing companies to find a purpose that's hopefully also one for the better to make the world just a little bit of a better place. And, you know, they have to be careful about what they write down as what that purpose is, because you'll be tested exactly on that point, right? That it is, it's only a matter of time before push will come to shove and you'll realize, what, was that true? And did I, yeah. did I, did I believe it? at the core in that visceral space or was it something I thought sounded nice and it just yep. feels like every brand comes to a testing uh, moment a crucible. absolutely and it's been a great reminder I think even for us Pete and I were talking about this the other day that the more we work with clients on purpose it's like a daily reminder for us at convicts to check in with ourselves on are we living up to being troublemakers for a better world and are we really focusing all of our efforts in the right direction because to your point, if we're going to hold Browns accountable to their purpose, we have to hold ourselves accountable too. So it's, it's a really nice yeah. balance for us. Yeah. And just like, that's, a, I know we're probably running over guys. Sorry, it's late oh, in it's Texas. Great. You're ready, you're ready for the, <laughs> go to the pub. I um, yeah, right. Yeah. I, but I, you look, there's one other thing I think I was going to mention early on was trying to do both is hard work and there's friction there because the client work often takes priority because there's a deadline that is impossible to push. And internally you're like, oh, but we're making this series. Oh, can we just push it a week? And it's, and it is, there's friction there. It's like, hey, I've already like, it feels like my day job is serving the clients and, and working on the revenue. And it's like, oh, but I have to work on brand. And that that's hard work. And there's been moments we had one operator that was helping me think about the business and the PL and how to, and it was like, separate them. Two different teams two different worlds and I was like it's not going to work it's not us like if the if the convicts brand team isn't also working on the client work then that's we're not Mm. that's not interesting then it feels like it's just like a nod to the marketing of like yeah we do this stuff for the sake of it it's like got to be the same there's got to be overlap there because I think the, the work we do for ourselves putting it out in culture hearing feedback testing things it's going to make us better for our clients. Mm. And if it's different teams and different businesses, I just don't think that's interesting, but it's, it does, it has its conflict and that's a, that's a challenge for us. But, you know, you've heard Ali, she's in charge of running the agency and she loves getting on pitch meeting. It's not a drag. It's not like, Oh, you know, it's like, okay, that's why I'm here. So to keep that alive is probably one of our big challenges, but also maybe the biggest opportunity for us. Yeah, j- just quickly on the pitch meeting, it's funny, Dylan, who's our amazing account director who we just hired from Saatchi, um, his first week, we have pitch meeting every Wednesday. And it was, he, I think, was already loving it. But after that call, our pitch call, he called me and he was like, this is why I'm here. Like to carve out an hour of our time to get everyone in a room and just throw out ideas on what do we want to make or who are we seeing in the community that we're super inspired about and we want to tell their story. Or actually, we have a client brief and we haven't really had time to jam on it and let's bring them a new proactive idea. We try and like protect the client work, you know, it's the last thing in pitch meeting, it's more about us. But even that of like, hey, how can we better a brief we have for a client? Um, he said, he's like, th- you know, I've worked in agencies. He's worked in agency for seven, eight years. He's like, this is different. This is us spending time about who are we as a brand and what do we want to go create? And as Pete said, it's the one meeting we really try to not move because it's also an hour where everyone just like comes up for air. It's like, let's just have some fucking fun and go make some awesome stuff and spend an hour working through it. Wonderful. Sorry, I don't know. I know I probably shouldn't swear on your podcast. It's oh, a lot no, of right. <laughs> well, hey, uh, this was wonderful. And I'm glad we went over because it was completely worth it. And thank you guys for being so candid. And um, it really is inspiring. You guys, I, it seems like you guys are a torch out there that people who have a light minded sensibility are able to find you guys. And um, way to go. Way to go. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thanks yeah. for the time, guys. Tim, call me about that CEO thing. I haven't got it all figured out. <laughs> <laughs> I will too, man. Will do. Thank all you right. Guys. Y'all have a good one. Amazing. Have a great night, guys.